In this recording, we're going to define a new congruency relation. We're going to let R be any ring. And S is a subring of R. And we're going to define a relation called congruency mod S on the ring R as follows. If A and B belong to ring R, we're going to say that A is congruent to B mod S if and only if A minus B belongs to the subring S. So that's our new definition. And my first question is going to be, is congruency mod S an equivalency relation? So let's turn our attention to that. So how would we go about proving or disproving that S is an equivalence relation? Well, let's think about that. Uh, congruency mod S is an equivalence relation if and only if we can show that this relationship is, uh, first of all, reflexive, second of all, symmetric, and third of all, transitive. So it's important to understand that if we can check off all three of these things, if these things work, then congruency mod S is an equivalence relation. So let's actually think about how we're going to go about doing that. So let's look at uh, whether or not this thing is reflexive. So is congruency mod S reflexive? Well, to test that, what we need to do is we need to pick some element inside R. And the question is, can we show that A is congruent to A mod S? Well, let's look at this. I know what A minus A is inside R. A minus A is just going to be the zero inside R. And I know that the zero inside R has to be part of S since I know that S is a subring of the ring R. And we have already proven that the zero element belongs to all subrings. Hence, A is indeed congruent to A mod S. And so uh, this particular relationship is indeed reflexive. Well, let's move on to the next property. Is congruency mod S symmetric? Well, what this means is we basically have to, to be thinking about this. If we know that A is congruent to B mod S, can we show that B is congruent to A mod S? Well, let's look at this. Let's let A be congruent to B mod S. So what that tells me is that A minus B belongs to set S. In other words, there exists an S inside capital S such that A minus B is equal to that little s. 
Now look at this. B minus A is just minus A plus B, which would be minus A minus B. And that's just going to be minus S. And minus S has to be inside capital S. And I basically want to justify each one of these statements very, very carefully. So uh, let's actually get into a different color. This is just uh, notation and uh, the fact that addition is commutative inside the big ring R. This particular equal sign is factoring out a minus sign, and we can do that by the law of plus minus signs in ring R. And then this particular equal sign is substitution. Uh, A minus B is just another name for S. And finally, that inclusion is because S is a subring and little s belongs to capital S. And subrings have to include all of the additive inverses of their elements. Now, when we put this together, what we see is that uh, we have shown that if A is indeed congruent to B mod S, then B will be congruent to A mod S. And so the question about whether or not S is symmetric gets answered with a nice big fat yes. So now what we're going to do is move on to transitivity. Is congruency mod, let's erase that and make that look a little bit neater. Is congruency mod S transitive? Well, let's think, what does that mean? Uh, we need to think about this. We need to assume that A is congruent to B mod S and that B is congruent to C mod S. And the question is, is can we show that uh, A is congruent to C mod S? If we can do that, then the answer to our question is yes, and this new uh, congruency relation will be an equivalence relation. Well, let's see, uh, how do we show this fact here? How do we investigate it? Well, I want to look at some known facts. A is congruent to B mod S is going to imply that A minus B is equal to, say, S1, where S1 belongs to capital S. And uh, we also know that B is congruent to C mod S, and that's going to imply that B minus C is equal to S2, where S2 is some element of S. And let's see, I want to erase that and make that neater. So we know that A minus B and B minus C both belong to S. Well, look at this. A minus C is the same thing as a minus B plus B minus C. And uh, I can put parentheses here and here. And that first one is S1. And the second one is S2. And that has to be inside S because S is a subring of R. And here again, it's important to realize that this first inequality is because minus B plus B is just a zero inside the ring. And we also have associativity.
And this second equality is just substitution of these facts right here. And we've already justified that through that statement there. So what is the upshot of this? Well, the upshot of this is A minus C belongs to S, and that implies that A is indeed congruent to C mod S. And because of this, what we now know is that the answer to this last question is a big fat yes. And to tie everything up, we can now say the following thing. Since congruency mod S is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive, we know that congruency mod S is an equivalence relation on the ring capital R. I want to end this video with an obvious question. What are the equivalence classes for congruency mod s. And we will investigate that in the next video.